This Seed Starting Moment series is about the whys and some of the hows of my seed starting story. The number one tip that you're going to hear throughout this whole series is keep it simple and stay out of the rabbit holes. Whether you dream of being a flower farmer or you just want to grow flowers for your kitchen table, I'm Lisa Mason Ziegler. I'm glad you're here. Let's jump in. So welcome to seed starting moment number three the germination, which is perhaps one of the most challenging for some time for some people. And I know it was for me. And it's really all about your setup and your environment. As a general go-to rule, the space that I am sprouting seeds in, I typically keep it coolish for sprouting for um cool season hardy annuals, and I keep it a bit warmer for warm season. I want to just say that out of the gate because we definitely have a totally different trans. We transition from one to the other. Rarely, if ever, because it would be pretty difficult to do, are we doing those both at the same time, right? And um, so the air temperature when I'm starting cool season hardy annuals in the room where they are is 65 to 70 degrees in general. Um, and that would be think spots like maybe a spare bedroom where you keep the door shut and the vents closed in there. Um, definitely a cooler spot because, you know, we're always using a seedling heat mat. So you definitely want to um, give that family the cool treatment, right? They really prefer those cooler temperatures that transition time, you transition from cool to warm. And when we start starting warm season seeds on the seedling heat mat, which all of them are, um, the room temperature is more like 70 to 75 or even a little bit warmer than that. So you transition from that cool environment to the warm environment. Now, the seedling heat mat is an important step in the seed starting um, process. And, you know, friends, even growers that are in greenhouses have, well, my friend Amy has one of those, a heat mat or a heat cable table where she has this huge table that they have created a supersized heat mat. You still have to have that consistent warmth to get seeds to germinate, whether they're cool or they're warm. And your air temperature environment will totally contribute to that. Now, one of the things that I do do um, a little bit differently between the cool and the warm with the seedling heat mat is I find that the cool season seeds really need that consistent warmth, but they perhaps like it a little less warmth than their cousins, the warm season, right? So I have found that putting a cookie cooling rack, yes, that little rack that you bring cookies out of the oven and put them on to cool them, set that rack on the heat mat and then put your trays there. That creates a little airspace and that just tones down the warmth, just a smidgen. They still get consistent warmth, but it's a little bit warmer. So friends, one thing you just need to know that even if your air temperature is 70 degrees and if it you're and you're trying to have a 75 or 70 degree soil temperature, your air temperature is typically, I'm sorry, your soil temperature is typically 15 to 20 degrees cooler than the air temperature. That's why it is so significant that you must use a seedling heat mat to get quicker, more consistent germination, right? So cool season hardy annual seeds, they do go on the seedling heat mat, but we do use a cookie cooling rack to just tone it down a smidgen. Now, when I start warm season stuff, no cookie cooling rack. They typically like it warmer to germinate. So we put the trays directly on the seedling heat mat. We move the um, trays off of the heat and to the light. Once we see signs of life of the seeds cracking in 50% or so of the seeds. So you're, cause the heat has then done its job. You're going to move it off the heat and take it over to the light. Another really important part of germination is does the seed need light or darkness to sprout? 
right? So what that means, if it says it needs light or surf, sew it on the surface, that means it needs light. It doesn't need grow light, y'all. That's just regular room light. And a big part of that I have learned through the years that contributes to that is maybe not so much the light, but those seeds need high oxygen to actually germinate and they won't get that buried down in the soil block. Um, so you need to know that before you actually start. When it says they do need darkness to sprout or it says cover them with soil, that's when you push them deeper into um, the block. A great example, zinnias, cosmos, and marigolds. Both are like little spear-like little seeds, um, and they all prefer darkness to sprout. So we literally poke the pointy end first, poke them into the block, which creates darkness along the side, but the tail is going to be sticking out and that is perfectly fine. That creates the darkness that those need. Now, moisture level. Um, I think that overwatering and not having the air temperature correct is the leading cause of not only seeds not sprouting, but also puny growth after they do sprout. So overwatering grows algae and mold. You do not need to take steps to prevent algae and mold except stop over watering. And the way you do that is by creating the correct air temperature. Plants, roots need oxygen as much as they need water. And when they're wet, wet all the time, oxygen is not present in that soil. That's why you've probably heard me mention a thousand times that you want to water first thing in the morning and your environment should be such that throughout the day it's drinking and drinking and getting drier and drier as the day 24 hours is ticking by. By the time it hits night, they're getting dry and by the next morning, your blocks are dried out. They're getting lots of oxygen. That cycle prevents anything from um, growing stuff on your blocks. The algae and mold, in fact, I have not, because I grow it from occasion when I've left water sitting in a tray that I missed or whatever, I grow my fair share of algae and um, mold here. I find that it doesn't affect the seedling, but what causes the algae and the mold is what does affect the seedling. It is the constant moist conditions. So bump if you are not dry by the next morning, then you have to figure out what's missing. Is it your air temperature? You need to warm it up. Cool conditions are what keep the soil from, um, from drying out. And I will say that in a perfect world, your sprouting station would be away from your vegetative growing station, like where your grow lights are, because you definitely want your grow light area to be warmer. Plants need warmth to grow. Think about when stuff starts popping out in the spring and they start growing. It's when things heat up. Um, so those are my germination, kind of the things that I'm thinking of. And if you want to learn more about how to start seeds, soil blocking, equipment, online courses on how to do it, head on over to thegardenersworkshop.com and keep your eye out for the next seed starting moment. <music>